Here are facts about Warren Buffett that you probably didn't know. Number 10. Wait, at what age? By now, you're well aware of the fact that Warren Buffett is super rich. And he's been rich for a long time now. However, did you guys know that he earned basically all of the money he's had since his 50th birthday? About 99% of it, in fact. This one is basically math and the power of compounding. By the time he reached 52, he was worth just a measly $376 million. Now compare that to the $80.5 billion he's worth now. Thanks to continued smart investing on the part of Buffett and the power of compounding, he became a billionaire by age 56. Over the last 30 years, his net worth has only continued to skyrocket. Number 9. Hey, at least he sent one. Maybe Hillary Clinton can learn a thing or two from Warren Buffett. Somehow, some way, Buffett has only sent one email in his entire life. He runs Berkshire Hathaway using 20th century technology. He prefers to conduct his empire the old-fashioned way. Or, if he's feeling fancy, he might call someone on his Nokia flip phone. The one email he did send was to Jeff Rakes of Microsoft back in 1997. In an interview with CNN, Buffett claimed that the email ended up in court in Minneapolis. So he's pretty much shied away from email ever since. Buffett was responding to an email sent by Rakes, who was analyzing the pros and cons of investing with Microsoft. Buffett is known to personally avoid technology for the most part, opting to not keep a computer on his work desk. However, he still has plenty of investments in the technology sector, in a roundabout way at least. At the very least, he fully understands the prominent place technology has in our economy, as he sold off Berkshire's stakes in Fox and IBM. Those moves are because Buffett doesn't have much confidence in their ability to thrive against new forms of technology such as Netflix and Google. Number eight, did someone say junk food? Imagine for a second that you're worth $80.5 billion like Warren Buffett. Now think of all the extravagant meals you could have anytime you wanted. It's impossible to go broke eating the most expensive food as much as possible when you're worth as much as Warren Buffett. But for Warren Buffett, he prefers a cheeseburger and cherry coke to a fancy steak and caviar that many high rollers love to indulge in. But of course, Buffett isn't your average multi-billionaire. Somehow, the 87-year-old Buffett faces no such dietary restrictions. In fact, by his own estimation, he consumes somewhere in the ballpark of 2,700 calories per day. This is achieved largely because he drinks at least five 12-ounce Cokes every day, starting with one for breakfast. Sometimes he'll even eat chocolate chip ice cream for breakfast. And then there's his love for McDonald's. Buffett actually eats breakfast at Mickey D's almost every single day. CNBC reported that once, while dining with Bill Gates at Mickey D's, Buffett picked up the tab. But get this, he used coupons to pay. Now that's, I guess, the type of discipline you need to invest like Buffett. So while the rest of us are counting carbs, Buffett is chowing down on burgers, ice cream, and bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches while chugging almost half a dozen Cokes every day. Not only has he avoided diabetes and morbid obesity, he's managed to make it to 87. Number seven, Buffett's first business was... From the time he was old enough to understand that you need money in order to survive, Warren Buffett has been an entrepreneur. At age seven, he began making money by selling chewing gum and sodas to his classmates. He also had his own paper route, delivering newspapers for the Washington Post. By age 11, he made his first ever investment. It was December 7th of 1941, the same day Pearl Harbor happened, when Buffett bought three shares of stock in Sitco and three for his sister for the price of $38. He sold used golf balls, he buffed cars, and by the time he was 16, he had amassed roughly $53,000 in today's money. By age 17, he had his own business setting up pinball machines and barber shops. These days, he says he wants kids to take a page out of his book and become entrepreneurs as well. That's why he helped create the Secret Millionaires Club, to help kids start their own businesses early in life so they can develop good financial habits early on in life, which he argues will help them later on. Number six, as a kid, he was a troublemaker. Despite Buffett's entrepreneurial endeavors as a kid, Buffett was apparently one extremely mischievous little kid. In his biography, The Snowball, Buffett recounts how he and his friends would hit up their local Sears and quote, rob the place blind. He confessed to stealing hundreds of golf balls, which if you consider the fact that he sold golf balls as a young kid, you could pretty much make the case that he was running organized crime unit at a young age. Okay, let's not get too carried away here. Anyways, he also reportedly had poor grades for a little while in school and even ran away from home. He also decided to sort of give a proverbial middle finger to all his teachers at once. Back in those days, 
AT&T was a stock that apparently all of Buffett's Caesars owned at one time. And of course, Buffett had a reputation for knowing what he was doing in the market. He came to the conclusion that AT&T was a company that was overvalued, and he decided to short the stock, and then he told all his teachers about it to spite them. But they knew he was right. Of course, since then he's gotten his act together, and has become one of the world's most prolific investors and philanthropists. Number 5. Which granddaughter? In 2008, reports claimed that Buffett had disowned his adopted granddaughter, Nicole. According to Reuters, Nicole, who was the adopted daughter of Buffett's son, Peter, participated in a documentary called The One Percent, which was a documentary about family members of the country's wealthiest people. This apparently caused some friction within the family. Nicole claimed that she decided to share what it's like to be Buffett's granddaughter, and she didn't think it was a big deal. But it created a huge estrangement from Buffett to the extent that he disowned Nicole and her twin sister. Reuters also reached out to the source close to the family who pointed out that Buffett wasn't all that close to Nicole, since she and her twin sister were adopted in their late teens. Buffett allegedly rarely saw either of them, even though he paid for their schooling and living expenses into their late 20s. Apparently, Buffett was upset that they spoke about his private life in the documentary while misrepresenting their relationship with him, which if you ask me, I'm completely on his side, and I have no issues with this one. Number four, who really should go to college? Given that he was a hardworking entrepreneur at an early age, Buffett had acquired quite a bit of wealth by the time he was at age for college. The fact that he already had the tools to run a business and he was already earning more money than his teachers, he really saw no reason to go to college, a fact that I'd agree with today. However, his father convinced him to go, and he eventually attended the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and then went to business school at Columbia where he earned his Master's of Science in Economics. And believe it or not, he went there after Harvard Business School rejected him. Buffett had even already told a friend, join me at Harvard but it was this rejection that helped shape Buffett into the investor he is today. These days, Buffett cautions that higher education isn't for everyone and everyone should be wise to invest in themselves. Number three, Floyd Money Mayweather. You might be surprised to know that Warren Buffett and Floyd Mayweather are actually friends. Then again, neither of them do things the conventional way and they both love to make money since it's another way of keeping score in life. So it sort of makes sense. After watching Floyd Mayweather taking on and beating Marcos Maidana, Buffett praised Mayweather's fighting, asserting that it was much easier to be an investor than a boxer. For his part, Mayweather has listed Buffett as one of his inspirations, claiming he looks up to his fellow billionaire. Mayweather also claimed that he looked up to Bill Gates and Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban while growing up in the difficult neighborhoods of Grand Rapids, Michigan. These two are certainly an odd pairing, but hey, they seem to enjoy each other's company. Buffett even visited Mayweather's and the money team at Mayweather's boxing club and before Mayweather's rematch with Maidana. Buffett and Mayweather both got in front of the green screen and posed like they were boxing each other for picks. Number two, Dale Carnegie's public speaking course. To understand one of the most successful people in the world, it helps to understand one of Buffett's most important moments in his life. Before he took the Dale Carnegie course for public speaking, he was terrified of public speaking. He said that taking the course changed his life and it taught him how to face his fears. Buffett claimed that he was so terrified that he couldn't even speak in public and that he'd throw up. In fact, he'd arrange his life so that he never had to get up in front of anybody. When he was 19, Buffett enrolled in Dale Carnegie's course for public speaking and it changed his life. While he has two degrees, Buffett says the most important degree that he got was from Dale Carnegie's course, and it's the only degree he proudly hangs on his office wall. Buffett credits this course for giving him the confidence to speak in public and propose to his first wife, Susan, to whom he was married to for 52 years. Number one, reputation above all else. It takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. That's how Buffett runs his life, and it's how he handles his business as well it provides some insight into his guiding philosophy. In fact, he said that his reputation is his most important asset. For a guy worth more than 80 billion, that's really saying something. In a memo to his managers at Berkshire, he once wrote, we can afford to lose money, even a lot of money, but we can't afford to lose reputation, even a shred of reputation. He's even said a similar quote, saying to the Solomon Brothers employees, quote, lose money for the firm and I will be understanding lose a shred of reputation for the firm, I will be ruthless. Yikes, didn't see that in Warren Buffett. Take away all the money, the success, and all the other things. The thing that matters most to Buffett is his reputation. Here's what's next.
girlfriend at the time let that little secret slip out. After letting the wind soak in a bit, Lavery eventually made two crucial decisions. First, he was determined to put his money to use how he saw fit. He felt compelled to help people, but only to the people he felt...